A particle moves along the x-axis with position at time t given by e to the negative t sine t from 0 to 2 pi. Find the time t at which the particle is farthest to the left and justify your answer. Now consider some position graph. Let's think about what it means for a particle to be furthest to the left. The positive position will be to my right and the negative position will be to the left. So if we create just any function, let's start here and we're going to positive position and we go backwards until we hit position zero right here and now we're in negative positions and then we come back and we hit back at zero again. Well I was farthest to the right right here because my velocity is changing from positive to negative. Remember that velocity is the derivative of position. And so here my slope is positive, here it's zero, and here my slope is negative. So because my velocity is changing from positive to negative, my position is at a max. I'm furthest to the right. However, where am I furthest to the left? Well, the answer is right here. Because before this point, my velocity is negative. And after this point, my velocity is positive. So I was walking in the negative direction, or our particle was moving in the negative direction, and then it turned around and went in the positive direction. But the moment that it was furthest in the negative direction is that moment when the velocity goes from negative, the negative direction, to positive in the positive direction. Now what I've done is I have graphed both the position function as well as the velocity function in Wolfram Alpha. And here they are. On the left is our position fun uh, function from 0 to 2 pi. And on the right is the velocity function from 0 to 2 pi. Now you'll notice that around time one, so a little bit less than time one, so right here, it looks like our position is furthest to the right. The position is at a max. But when is the position at a min? Well, it looks to be around four, a little bit less than four it looks like. Because the position is the lowest right here. This is the negative position over here. This is left of zero, and so this right here is where it's furthest to the left. However, we don't have the tools yet to analyze the minimum of x. However, if you look at the velocity, a little bit less than 4, what's happening to velocity? Well, since this is our velocity graph, the velocity is negative when the graph is below the x-axis, and here the velocity is, or the t-axis, and here the velocity is positive when it's above the t-axis. So consider this point right here, just to the left of 4. The velocity before 4 is negative, and after around 4, it's positive. So the velocity is changing from negative to positive at this point 4. And if you look at the lowest point of position, our velocity is negative to the left of this point around here, and it's positive if you look at the slope. The slope here is positive. And so, all we have to do is we have to take the derivative of position to find our velocity, set it equal to zero, and then investigate what's happening around that particular zero because we want the zero to change from negative to positive. And that's going to be our plan of attack for this problem right here. So let's first take the derivative of our position function to find our velocity function. And then we'll set that equal to zero and investigate those points. Now to take the derivative of position, we have to use product rule as well as chain rule for the first. So product rule dictates that we take the derivative of the first function and the derivative of e to the negative t is negative e to the negative t by chain rule times the second function. 
so times sine of t, plus the first function, which is e to the negative t, times the derivative of the second function, which is cosine of t, I'm going to set this equal to zero. Let's first factor out a negative e to the negative t because e to the stuff is never going to be equal to zero. So here we have sine of t minus cosine of t because we're factoring out a negative and this is equal to zero. Now e to the stuff is never ever ever going to be equal to zero no matter what you plug in. Turns out in this case uh, e to the negative infinity approaches zero. However, we can't really get to negative infinity, so who cares about that? Now, this implies that sine of t minus cosine of t has to be equal to zero. And if you add cosine of t to both sides, you get that sine of t has to be equal to cosine of t. Now, this occurs at angle 45 between zero and two pi, uh, or in terms of radians, pi over four. So between zero and two pi, this occurs at pi over four and at pi plus pi over four. And that's five pi over four. So we know that between zero and two pi, our velocity is gonna be equal to zero at t equals pi over four and t equals five pi over four. In the max min section, we'll deal with this even further, but we can make a graph of velocity and plot our two zeros. So here's pi over four and five pi over four. If you look to the left of pi over four, let's say zero, we can plug that into our velocity function into here. E to the zero is one times negative one is negative one. Sine of zero is zero, cosine of zero is one, so here we have zero minus one is negative one, and negative one times negative one is positive one. Of course, if you look in between pi over four and five pi over four, the velocity is negative, and to the right of five pi over four, our velocity is positive. Well, remember what we said before. When your velocity changes from positive to negative, your position is at a max. And if your velocity changes from negative to positive, then your position is a min. And it turns out that five pi over four is where our position is a min. So the answer is time equals five pi over four because the velocity is changing from negative to positive. A particle moves along the x-axis so that its velocity at time t is given by negative quantity t plus 1 times sine of quantity t squared over 2. Find the acceleration of the particle at time t equals 2. Is the speed of the particle increasing at t equals 2? Why or why not? Now before we even approach this problem, let's consider something first, which is if your velocity is above the t-axis, what is your speed going to look like? Well, remember, of course, that speed is the absolute value of velocity. So if your velocity is positive, speed is just, will be the same as velocity. So if your velocity is above the t-axis, if it's positive, speed will be the exact same. However, if your velocity is below the t-axis, then when you find speed, you are flipping the entire function about the t-axis. So if your velocity beforehand, if your velocity is decreasing, then your speed is increasing because velocity was negative and decreasing. And therefore, when you find the speed, you'll have to flip your velocity about the t-axis. And when you do that flip, it mirrors itself up here. So. When velocity was decreasing and negative, your speed is increasing. And of course, when velocity is negative and increasing, your speed is decreasing. Now, to find the acceleration at time t equals two, 
acceleration at 2 is equal to the derivative of velocity at time t equals 2. Now to do this you might want to use a calculator. I did and I got 1.588 as the acceleration approximately. So the acceleration at time t equals 2 is 1.588. And the next part is, is the speed of the particle increasing at time t equals 2. Well, increasing means is the speed going up. Now, if you look at speed going up, that means that the derivative of speed is going to be positive. However, what is speed? Speed is the absolute value of velocity. So in order to investigate what's happening with speed, let's first look at what's happening with velocity. Now we know that acceleration is the derivative of velocity. If acceleration is the derivative of velocity, then it's also the slope of velocity. So at time t equals two, the slope of velocity is 1.588. That means that our velocity is increasing. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that our speed is also increasing because if the velocity is below the t-axis, if velocity is negative and increasing, then when you find speed, you would have to flip your velocity about the t-axis and it's now decreasing. So in order to determine what actually is going on with speed, we need to find the velocity at time two. Because if the velocity is positive, then speed will be the same as velocity and speed will also be increasing. However, if velocity is negative, then speed is going to flip that about the t-axis and it will then be decreasing. So the velocity of time two is plug two on into here. And if you use a calculator, you get negative 2.728. So it turns out here that our velocity is decreasing, or sorry, our velocity is increasing and negative. So if we graph velocity over time, it's increasing and negative which means that when you find the speed, it will be decreasing and positive. So, the speed is decreasing at time t equals two because velocity is negative and increasing.